Uh, Yanko, what exactly are the concerns? Well, the thing is, in 2017, the Department of Education adopted a policy that will allow uh, HIV testing, counselling and condoms to be uh, given out on school premises. Uh, the thing is, it's two years later now and these services haven't been rolled out because they haven't published any guidelines. Now, you have to keep in mind these are quite sensitive services that will be uh, given to learners on school premises, so there needs to be clear operational guidelines as, as to how these services uh, will be offered. So during the week we heard from uh, Dr. Zard Borders saying that uh, it's been nearly two years and there's still no guidelines so they can't provide these services at schools and according to their studies and experience they find that learners actually prefer that these services are available uh, at schools and within school hours because they don't always have the time or the opportunities to go to clinics outside of the school and they also say that uh, they scared who they might run into into these clinics so they want or a lot of them prefer the services to be on school grounds so they raised concern this week then we heard from the department uh, yesterday saying that there's actually been a lot of work going on ensuring that this policy can be rolled out but it's a very complex process and then they said that these guidelines are actually being released next week. Uh, what the, then again, Dr. Zard Waters responded, saying that they welcomed this, but uh, obviously they did raise concern because it took two years. Uh, for them, that's a long time. The department saying that um, it is a complex process and policies take this time. Basically, what is important is that these services, if, uh, if the department does go ahead and publish these guidelines next week, will then uh, soon be available uh, for learners on school premises, seeing as they're one of the most vulnerable groups when it comes to HIV infections. Do we know how these services will work? What sort of form will they take? Well, that's the thing, and that's why these guidelines are so important. Who will have what type of role? And what the department is saying is what is important. You're giving these, uh, you're giving these services or the, the responsibility of conducting these services uh, basically to new people. It's never been conducted really on school premises. It was usually on clinics outside. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, consultation that needed to go into what exactly and who exactly will be involved in these uh, sexual reproductive health services what the department is saying which is important is it's not that they haven't been providing these services they just broaden it uh, this new policy to allow specifically HIV testing and counseling and for them to be able to distribute condoms on school grounds and obviously some people uh, might find that a bit strange and might think that uh, just giving a 14 year old a condom is uh, it, it, some people might question that what they're saying is that we need to make sure that these kids are educated when it comes to HIV and because they are together on school grounds um, and they are uh, adults in the form of educators and so on uh, involved in this whole process they think that it's perfect so both doctors are boarders and the department actually want to work towards this goal uh, the, uh, MSF just raised concerns because they said that it's being delayed uh, but the department is saying that this soon will be implemented and next week we'll see exactly what are these guidelines and how these services will exactly be offered to learners uh, on school grounds and during school hours. You mentioned that uh, some people might raise eyebrows about this. Um, do we know if any concerns have been raised from parents or anybody like that? Well, that's one of the things that the department raised is whether they have permission to go ahead and uh, test these kids for HIV and it has to, uh, has to do with consent. And that's also why these guidelines are so important and why, because uh, usually when the services were conducted off the school premises, it wasn't the, the responsibility of the department. Now that whole uh, setup changes. So now they need to consult parents. Parents need to be aware that these uh, services are being offered uh, to their children at the school. So that's one of the reasons why the department says it has taken so long, because these are some uh, of the stakeholders that they needed to consult uh, beforehand. And this is, as I've mentioned, a very sensitive topic. Not a lot of parents want to talk about it, specifically if your kid is still under 18, still in school. It's not a thing that you want to think uh, your, children, uh, your child might already be involved in, or you might think that 
your child doesn't need to worry about HIV. Uh, this is a lot of sensitive topics that need to be discussed. So parents definitely raise concern. And that's why uh, the department is saying they don't want to rush a policy because they said uh, they've seen that policies are implemented even though they're not ready to be implemented. And then they end up in court. Um, and then all the work was for nothing. So that's why they've taken their time. Uh, but we heard from Dr. Zabbordes saying that they need to um, provide these services as quickly as possible because uh, the lack of these services are actually putting uh, specifically teenagers at risk. And one of the stats that they quoted is, is about that uh, 2,000, an estimated 2,000 uh, young women and girls get infected with HIV still every week in South Africa. So there is a lot of pressure to get this policy implemented as one way, which uh, this can hopefully be prevented or the numbers can be decreased. That's our reporter, Ian Sies, Janka Tolme.